Welcome, everybody, to our Red Sox review. I'm here with my co-host, Dick Reedy. How are you, Frank? How are you, Dick? We're here uh, a day before pitches and catches out of report to spring training for what we hope is a better year this year than the last two. And so, Dick, uh, we have had a, uh, oh, I want to call it a shake-up, but a major, some major changes in the Red Sox uh, administration. No question about so it. So maybe you want to uh, start this program off with a little bit of what's going on with the Red Sox front sure, office. I'll be glad to. Well, I think the Red Sox made a number of changes. We, we read about the players that they acquired and who let that go and stuff like that. However, uh, they made some major uh, changes in their administration. Sam Kennedy is now the president of the Red Sox, and Larry Lacchino is down over the Providence uh, uh, with Pawtucket. And he tried Providence, and I was going to go back to Pawtucket. But anyway, uh, they also brought on this guy named Bannister, whose father was a pitcher at one right. time for the White Sox, I believe. That's correct. They had a big article about him in the Boston Globe. Okay. Uh, he was a pitcher, yes. Floyd Bannister. Floyd Bannister, left -handed yes. Left-handed pitcher. I remember him. Right. And so uh, they made those changes. They were, they were big changes. And then they signed Farrell, not Farrell, but they signed Lavolo for a period of time, which uh, he was a guy who was just a bench coach, and now he's kind of a, a super bench coach based upon the salary they're giving him. And I don't know how Farrell feels about that. He must have put on a good face about it. But uh, He has to. Uh, in yeah. the back of his mind, he's going to be thinking, well, what could, what's going to happen here? He's got somebody right over his shoulder here. Yeah. But they kept Lavolo because... Uh, I understand that they paid him what a first-year manager would be earning in the big leagues in order to keep him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think what's happening here is, Dick, is that if the Red Sox uh, have another very poor year and uh, are out of, the, out of the race by, let's say, the All-Star game, that I think uh, Farrell is only here because of what happened to him last year in his health, and they brought him back. But I think he's on a short rope. Yeah, I, I believe that as well. I think... Uh if he doesn't perform, get the club to perform up to standards, even with all the changes that Dombr Dombrowski has made, I think he is on very thin ice. I, I agree he's on thin ice. Dombrowski seems to have made some big moves this year too, Dick, in, yeah, uh, did. in terms of where he wants to go with this team. And if obviously uh, uh, the biggest of the big moves was bringing in David Price. Yeah, no question but about it. But big money, Dick, $230 million for seven years. <laughs> and as we know, I don't think you're going to get the caliber pitcher that he is right now for seven more years. Right. History has told us that it doesn't work. And uh, we all, all we have to do is look at C.C. Sabathia from the Yankees, sure. who signed a seven-year contract averaging $24 million a year. And basically, C.C. has not been a pitcher the last two or three years with the Yankees. That's true. Uh, he's had some other off-field problems. He so had some issues with drinking and uh, alcoholism, etc. His, his weight was another issue. Yes, his weight. But, Dick, these pitchers are not winning 20 games, 18 games, and blowing teams away at age 37 and 38 years old. Not anymore. And Price is 31 years old. So, yeah. yeah. So he's you get four guys, years out of him, you're lucky. Just like Sabathia, he's tall, he's 6'6". Six, six. Right. You know, we've got a great fastball, and he may be good for two or three years. Who right. knows? Uh, but, you know, the Red Sox aren't going to win just because Price is here. I mean, how many wins can he have? And if you look at his record, he has been with very good teams in his career. He was sure. in Tampa Bay, was a very good team. And then he was with a tremendous hitting team last year, the Toronto Blue Jays. And he went nine in a row with Toronto when he got traded from Detroit. And they were scoring an average of eight runs per game for him. So that, yeah, if you can't win with eight runs per game... Uh, not that he's not a good pitcher. He had a 2.45 2 ERA. So I think he'll bring the fans back to Fenway. And I think that was one of the moves that the Red Sox had to make because, as I think we all know, the Red Sox own 80% of Nesson. True. And television, as we all know, generates its income from advertising revenue. And if you don't get the attendance... The advertisers aren't going to advertise. No, so they, sure. I think they've brought it back a lot of interest uh, this year by bringing price into the fold. That's true. And that's not a lot of money when you think of the revenue that they generate. They're paying them $230 million over seven years. They generate much more than that in their TV revenue and their ticket sales. Yeah, plus the, the price of uh, products in the, in the stadium itself, they're not cheap. They're not cheap. They're the highest concession pricing in baseball. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, with these changes, I think uh, uh, with Lucchino out, I think uh, 
there's going to be a little less tension in that ballpark because Lucchino was, was a very good guy. He did a lot of work for a lot of major league teams with San Diego, with Baltimore, built new ballparks, but he seemed to be uh, a take-control guy with the Red Sox. And I think that rubbed some people the wrong way. Well, he had, you know, for as smart as he is, uh, he rubbed some people the wrong way. And that didn't go, I mean, we saw him Theo Epstein. He, Theo Epstein, there he is with the Cubs yeah, now. Sure, he's doing well with the he's Cubs. He's doing well with the Cubs. Well, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the Cubs. Yes. But, uh, but Theo's doing quite well. And you know, there are other people who may not have come to the Red Sox based upon Lucchino's personality. Right. You so know? I think they, uh, may, they've brought some, they brought younger people in with Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Uh, keeping Lavolo back, he's a nice, he's, he's only in his, he's like he's 50, 51 years old. Yeah, he's fairly young. He's fairly young. Uh, so I think with the, with this, in this new uh, Bannister guy that they brought in, I guess he's going to try to uh, perform some miracle paperwork, <laughs> I guess, if you want to call it that, with the Red Sox regarding their pitching. He's going to, he's going to be all through the minor league system as well as the major league system. Well, and one of the key factors they say is that he did a lot of work with Rich Hill. Yes. And Rich Hill is now signed, I think, with... Uh, Oakland. Oh, okay. He's with Oakland. He did a very good job for us at the end of the year. Of course, there was no pressure on him. Right. But other than self-imposed, if he wants to make a good showing. But he did a great job while he was here. But I saw, I compared him what he had been before to when he came, came with us. I mean, his overall performance really changed. It really did. He came from the ashes. Yeah. Uh, in the last two months of the season. It was incredible. He did very well, yeah. Uh, and uh, we ha I happen to know him through my in-laws, and he's a wonderful guy. Yeah? He really is, yes. He's a wonderful guy. We we'll have to see those good things happen to guys like yes, that. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, I've also uh, seen what's happening with uh, uh, the number two pitcher, as the Red Sox will call him now, Buckholz. Buckholz. Yeah. He's got $12.5 million on the, on the books this year, and the Red Sox offered him an extension and he turned it down. Oh. So what does that tell us, Dick? He's overly optimistic. He's overly <laughs> optimistic, right, because we know we, every year he breaks down halfway through the season, but he turned down a, he turned down an extension on his card. He's yeah. 31 years old as well. That's true. And the Red Sox do have an option next year uh, to on keep him, him. Yeah. on, on Buckholz to keep him. Uh, but as we all know, uh, pitching wins in baseball in the long term. And I think the Red Sox need to have a big turnaround in their pitching staff this year. Oh, sure. Because really the only change they have is in the starting rotation is Price. Because you get Buck Holtz, you get Porcello, you get Rodriguez, who was okay. And I think that Price may uh, help this guy, Eduardo Rodriguez, uh, who was a rookie last year, basically, that right, came up. Was. And uh, I think he may be helping him a little bit in terms of his control, because he was streaky in his control last year with the Red Sox. Plus the fact that, uh, from what I read, the Price is a guy who is a, a very good teammate, so he's going to try to work with Rodriguez to help make him a better pitcher. He's a great pitcher right now and with, for, with all the tools he has, but he's got to get that winning attitude, and right. Price might help in that respect. And then we have Joe Kelly, who has a, lot, has, has a, a very good fastball and was a, a decent pitcher, but he was all over the map last year, Joe, uh, with the... Uh, with the Red Sox, with down to the minor leagues, he came back. He was very inconsistent, and uh, so the Red Sox pitching, uh, starting pitching, I think needs to uh, come around from where they were last year. But they did show up the bullpen did this you? year. Yes, they did. Uh, they brought in Kimbrel from San Diego, who uh, last year was 29. A 39 out of 43 save attempts last year. That's pretty good. Yeah, and he was very good with the with the uh, San Diego Padres. Uh, and now you still have Koji, who I think will be the setup man this year, yeah. unless Kimball falls off the cliff, which hopefully no. And uh, then they brought in this guy Smith from Seattle. True. Yeah. Uh, so he has been a pretty good middle relief pitcher or late Tremendous inning relief fastball. pitcher. Tremendous fastball. Right. And so the bullpen is, was their downfall last year. Because I think, Jake, as we know, pitchers have pitched six innings today, and that's it. They're all in this pitch count. Yeah. They're all in the pitch count. So I think the Red Sox bullpen last year really got burned out late in the season because they were throwing in guys like Tazawa, who, who pitched more innings than any other relief pitcher last year in Mace yeah, Bay in the American did. League. Yeah, it's out of the show. Right. 
<laughs> exactly. The end of the year, he was getting belted. He was. They actually they they put him on the shelf the last three four weeks yeah. of the season, I believe. Yeah, he was getting, and so uh, their bullpen has been is short has been shored up, uh, and I so hopefully, I think uh, with the pitching that they have, and if they can turn around the starting pitching, this bullpen is meaningless unless the starting pitching can cool. perform. Okay. It really it really is, in my opinion. That's for sure. Yes. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, positional players, two of which <laughs> last year, in, our, in my opinion, and I think in yours, didn't perform. No, no way about it. And I'm saying, I'm, I think in a way that we're fortunate that Dombrowski's not a guy who's going to sit and watch and watch and watch. He's going to ask them to perform. If they perform, that's going to be fine. If they don't, he'll go someplace, but they're not going to stay with us. Big contracts with these guys, Dick. Yeah, that's, that's the key. That trying to move these guys, it's impossible to move them. I think with the money that they're being paid, they both had roughly ninety million dollar yeah, contracts. Yeah, that's a lot of dough. Yeah, and that's that's a lot of dough. And you know, when you have Ramirez at first base now, um, I'm really concerned. You know, people say, well, he was a shortstop. He was a, he was a pretty good shortstop when he came up with the Red Sox. He should have all the tools to do the ground balls and what have you. But first base is a little bit different. There's yeah, a lot of movement with your feet yeah, and, and being in position. There's no way you can put him at third base because he doesn't have the wheels. Correct. You know, and uh, so that's another factor. So now he's stuck at third base, first base, and it's, it's a retraining. Whether he has the gumption to, to really train, I'm not sure. I never thought the guy had drive. Right, he doesn't have drive. Or, or passion. For it, it didn't show any last year, certainly no. not. And so the Red Sox have kept Travis Shaw. Who played pretty well for uh, last year with the Red Sox. They yeah, hit about 16, 17 home runs, and yeah, he did pretty well. So they've kept him. And I think what they might have in mind, if they if they can't do anything with Ramirez, is we know, we know that this is Ortiz's swan song. Sure. This is his last year. And uh, that being said, I think if Ramirez cannot perform in the field adequately, that and they can't dump him anywhere. <coughs> that he would be there. He would be there. P D H next year. Where else are you going to put him? I don't. I don't know. Right. There's no other place to put him. Mm -hmm. So they're taking a shot here, hoping that he'll turn around. And if not, and uh, and he can hit, you know, relatively consistently. I think they may use him as a D H for next year. And that's why Shaw has been kept around as well. Well, I think they they have no, no, many other alternatives. You know, so they get Shaw, you know, uh, David Ortiz goes, they get Ramirez. Uh, I don't know. That's it. Yeah. That's it. As, as the guy at third doesn't seem to be a guy who would be a, a DH candidate. No. Sandoval, no. I don't think he'd be a DH candidate. No. 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 And so I guess uh, they, uh, Sandoval says he's lost 20, 25 pounds. Uh, that's fine. But he still has to swing the bat. Yeah, and he didn't perform last year. Well, losing that weight, <coughs> does he lose power? Right. You know exactly. But looking at his history with San Francisco, on Sandoval, um, he had a lifetime average with San Francisco around 272, and last year he hit 256, uh, and he had some two good World Series with them. Yeah, he did. And uh, that's what that's what put him out in the limelight was his two good World Series with San Francisco. But he was a big disappointment last year as well as Ramirez. Uh, and speaking of all of this and the team that they show up right now, at the last year the Red Sox were fifth in run scored in the major leagues. We would never believe that. That's right. They were fifth in the major leagues in run scored, but the pitching was horrendous, both yeah. bullpen and starting. Yeah, you're right. It didn't measure up. It did not measure up, no. Uh, your thoughts on the two guys last year that... Uh, in our opinion, played up to their potential and maybe more than their potential. Bets and Bogarts. Yeah. Well, uh, Bogarts, I think Bogarts is becoming, um, obviously, mature as he gets, uh, stays in the game. He understands what it takes to become a major leaguer and to be consistent about that. He's around the, the guys like Ortiz and who are telling him, hey, look, these are the kind of things you have to do. And I think he's picked up on that. And you know, Mookie Betts, I mean, this guy is just phenomenal. He's played very well. Yeah. He played very well. But he is, uh, the Red Sox, I think, uh, at this point, uh, weak in the outfield. Unless they're going to, I think they're going to put Betts in right field. 
and put Bradley in center field, field, field yeah. who has not really hit the ball well for them at all. He had a hot streak last year for like three weeks, but he's not been living up to his potential. But defensively, he's as good as any center fielder. Best in the majors. Best in the majors, right. I was surprised, though, Frank, we're talking about Bradley. I think he had 15 home runs. Yes. And uh, for a guy his size, he's not that big. No. He had some pop in the bat, and I said, wow, that kind of surprised me. Uh, this is after he came back from Pawtucket. And uh, I figured that the Sox, when they sent him down, they were going to write him off and maybe even trade him. But he came back up, and he, he played well. He hit the ball extremely well. And uh, then he kind of tailed off at the end of the year. He, he hit the ball well for like three weeks to a yeah. month. And they thought he, he really would find his way. <coughs> Excuse me. But he's going to be consistent this yeah, year. no question about it. Uh, and the other, the other question mark is in left field with this kid Castillo, who signed a five-year, $72 million contract at age 27. I know. He's been around now a year, almost two he, years. He was out of ball for a year right, or two. Right, and he was out of baseball before that for a year or two. And so he's going to be playing left field. Uh, so those are two big question marks in the outfield. The only advantage the Sox have is that if Castillo kind of flounders away, uh, they got this guy Chris Young, as you know, for the Yankees. Right, but Chris Young, according to what I see, Dick, is uh, only a hitter against left-handed pitching. Yeah, I mean, but he is an alternative uh, that they had they didn't have before, so he's a possibility. Yeah, he's the fourth outfielder. Yeah, he's the fourth outfielder. So we have, four, in my opinion. Four players here who need to really step it up this year, and so uh, we need to get <coughs> Sandoval, Ramirez, Bradley, and Castillo yeah. to, to step it up. So there's four out of the starting nine of uh, eight. Uh, the other question mark, I don't think it's a question mark, is, is uh, Ken Ortiz had his best year in 10 years last year. His best productive year in 10 years uh, last year. Can he do it again for the final time? I don't know. I, I read an article a couple of days ago that talked about Ortiz, and he said he is in the best shape he's been in, in 10 years. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my God. I mean, what does that mean? Yeah, I know. Let's hope it means a, a, a lot of production this year. Yeah, I hope so. In, in terms of uh, production for him. But uh, he really is the only power hitter in that lineup. Yeah. When you talk about power, to be consistent with 25 home runs or 20, 25, you know, 100 RBIs. Uh, uh, I mean, does Ramirez have that capability? He does, but we haven't seen it. But Ramirez, people don't seem to think, realize that Ramirez is a, a fairly uh, big person. He's 6 to 200. Well, last year he was about 240 pounds. That's too, too heavy, but if he drops down to 220, you know, with that swing and that size, he may he may add some juice to the lineup. He should be adding some juice. If you remember last year, in the first month of the season, I think he had what seven or eight home runs in in one month, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then he tailed off dramatically after he ran into the yeah, wall. Yeah, he did. I mean, throughout his career, he has led the whatever league he's been in. He led the league in doubles. You know, I didn't see that this year, last year at all. Didn't happen. And so he had some doubles, but my gosh, not the kind that you would expect. No, they had did not, did years, not huh? produce. You're absolutely right. Did not produce. So, uh, you know, we all jumped up uh, in, in glee when we see David Price come to this team. But when you analyze this team as we're talking about right now, there's a lot of question marks. There's, there's four big question marks. Is Bedroya the Bedroya of old? I don't know. We don't know. We haven't seen him really in the last three years come up to the expectations that we thought we were going to see. That's true. We haven't seen it. Those injuries have hurt him so Yes, he had injuries, etc. I mean, we'd love to have nine players with like him hustling and working as hard as he does. Uh, that we cannot take away from him. Uh, but we, know, we don't know where Bedoya can do any better than he's been doing or not. So, uh, I mean, if you look at this Red Sox and, and look at it uh, from a positioned situation, those are the starting players that we're looking at. Now we get two catches. Swihart did pretty well last year, but defensively, Dick, I think he's he's, he's very weak. He's weak, uh, and I guess this uh, uh, Vasquez is still not going to be ready until the middle of the season. They're going to well, put him in Pawtucket, I think. Right. Well, to stick with uh, Swihart for a second. I mean, I would be irritated at the number of pass balls he had. 
That was just not good at all. He had a lot of pass balls. He didn't hold the glove the right way. He didn't get down and, and like he should have. But okay, so now he's learned hopefully his lesson. And now we got uh, but Hannigan. They're is, keeping Hannigan. Yeah, they're going to keep him because I think he's a he's a uh, well with Vasquez playing in Pawtucket, they're going to they're going to probably keep him down there for at least a half the season or close to half the season to see what he can do yeah. uh, in terms of you know rehabilitating himself uh, as a hitter and as a catcher. Well, that takes some of the pressure off him by <coughs> being down in Pawtucket. Right, it does. And uh, not have to be up here in the major leagues trying to prove that he is the number one catcher. Right. And so that gives him some relief by going down there. He is, he is a very good defensive catcher. No question about uh, it. He's very good defensively. Uh, so he's, only, he's only, what, 23? 23, yeah. He's only 23. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the Red Sox, the catching position in the past has been an issue with them. Now they got two pretty good catches yeah. here. Uh, and I'm not sure they're going to keep both of these guys. At, at this point, they will. But if Vasquez can play, what do you do at Swihart? He's not a bad catcher, I mean. And I'm sure he'll improve defensively. Well, uh, the pitching staff has become, uh, has a lot of confidence in Hannigan. You know, they he's do. He's an experienced catcher. Veteran player. He, he know, yeah, he knows the game, and kind of like Ross was when he was with us. Yes, right. right. He's, he's now in Chicago. He's now in Chicago, yeah. right. And, right. He's uh, trying to get Lester to stop, you know, picking off guys at first base. <laughs> <laughs> Lester had more stolen bases against him than any pitchers in the major leagues. Oh, my God. Yes. All the talent and look at... Yep, yeah, and he can't throw the ball to first base. It. He's like that guy Matt Young we had. That's correct. Couldn't throw the ball to first base. Couldn't throw the ball to first base. And we had a second baseman in the, in the American League, the Knobloch. Tech Knobloch, yeah. Couldn't throw the ball to first base <laughs> either. <laughs> Amazing, huh? Amazing. Uh, all right, let's just take another look, Dick, at... Uh, where we look at these, the Red Sox in terms of uh, uh, pitching here. I mean, there's a couple of guys here that showed a little bit of life last year. They have a left-handed pitcher named Johnson. Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson, Johnson yep. right. Uh, who showed a little bit of life for two or three starts, but I think he has a lot of potential. And uh, But he will end up in Pawtucket for the moment. And uh, I think uh, the other guy that we, we're looking at now with two left-handed pitchers, you got this Bobby Ross, who I think will be one of the left-handed pitchers that the Red Sox will keep in the bullpen this year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I think uh, Smith will be the other guy that's can he can throw the ball 100 miles an hour. If we look at the major leagues today and we look at these relief pitches, uh, unless you can throw the ball 100 miles an hour, you are having a little bit of an issue. That's, so and that's a good point in a way because. Even these guys, you say, "Wow, this guy's still 95." Yeah. These major leaguers can, can catch up to it. They swat that ball right, right on the right on the infield. Right, they can they can catch up to it. Okay, uh, let's just look. Uh, the, we got about three or four minutes left, Dick. Let's just look at this American League in terms of where we think the Red Sox may end up in terms of the teams in the American League. The Yankees have not done anything really dramatically this right. year. True. But they got a huge payroll, Dick, and they're not spending big money this year. They didn't go after big money. They got twenty-six million dollars with Rodriguez. They got Beltran for over twenty million dollars. Uh, I mean, I, I just think that they, they got to get rid of some of this payroll. Uh, the, the Yankees are, are uh, you know, I think they're in they're in trouble because of the monies that they've spent in the past. They got Sabathia with twenty-four million. There's another guy there, and they got Teixeira. They got four guys that are over the eighteen million dollar mark, eighteen to twenty-six million, and neither of them, none of these guys are really you know, the future of the Yankees. And so they're not spending any money. But I think the Yankees bullpen is pretty good. Yeah, they, and they'll they, be up there. It is pretty good. They got that, that guy, Samson. Yes. He's an extremely good pitcher. Right. I think they're going to be up there. And I think Detroit, uh, they're, not in the, uh, they're not in the East, but I think Detroit uh, helped themselves out this year uh, defensively and as well as, you know, at the bat. Yeah. So uh, Tampa Bay, I don't know. Baltimore, I don't know. Uh, Toronto? Uh, Toronto can still swing the bat, so they, they, they could be in the mix. But I think uh, if we can get some of these question marks to the positive side, I think the Red Sox will make a run for it this year in terms of where they end up. Will they finish? Will they make the playoffs? There's a lot of conjecture. It's about 50-50 that they will or they won't. Uh, but I think it all depends on these four that we talked about, if they can produce. And hopefully, Bogarts and Betts can, you know, replica repeat what they did last year, have a replica of last oh, year. And if Pedroia can play like he's played in the past, yeah. that'd 
that, that's a big right. deal. So we have a lot of question marks here in terms of where the Red Sox are. If uh, everything falls into place like it did in 2013, <laughs> and whoever figured that team to win, be in the, in the, yeah. let alone the World Series and be a World Series champion, sure, yeah. whoever figured them to be anywhere that year. But everything fell into place that year. So we need some of this to fall into place this year, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I just don't think, Dick, that we ought to take too much stock in what happens in spring training. I think that's a, that's a trial period for a lot of these I people. I would just tell our audience that uh, uh, don't hold those news reports yes. uh, you know, that yeah. think on their way to the World Series. Right. And, okay, we got a couple of minutes left, so I just think that... Uh, uh, you know, the news reports want to make everything sound rosy. Yeah. Uh, they bring on these guys in interviews, and everything is rosy. And uh, you never see a negative word about anybody. So, yeah, yes, folks, don't listen to all of that stuff and, make it, <laughs> and say, okay, we're in, because that's not the case. So uh, we'll probably see you folks again uh, probably halfway through the season. Sure. And uh, hopefully we'll have some positive uh, outlook for the remainder of the season, and let's hope the Red Sox are in the hunt by the All Star game. I'm looking forward to it. I yes. hope you all are, and we let's are. see where it goes. We are. Nice to have you here, Dick. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Dick. And uh, we'll see you folks uh, come to the All Star time. Thank you.